What is going on, everyone? And welcome back to the DK Garage. I'm Jeremy. That's Joe. And this is the Race Day Rundown. Yeah, we're at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. It's the final race before we get into a little bit of a break. And we're excited to get a exciting track, uh, short track action to end it. We've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. We talked a lot about uh, what we are looking uh, forward to and who we expect to uh, really be dominant and why. Lots of stats and things in our original podcast, the long version. But what we're doing here today is uh, the race day rundown. We're going to get you in and out with our DK impact scores. That's a scale of 1 to 10 and uh, how much of an impact we think they'll have on the race, uh, 10 being a huge impact, and one really don't think about even trying to roster them. But uh, before we get underway, we want to let you know we have a weekly DraftKings contest that we uh, uh, do every week. We've got a good group of uh, uh, contestants already that we enjoy playing against weekly, but if you want to be in the mix, definitely drop your DraftKings tag below in the comments, and we'll get you on the invite list weekly for that. But Jeremy, you want to take away the quick race preview? Well, we're at New Hampshire this week, uh, the final race before our extended break, almost three weeks off. I know that's going to be uh, very look forward to for both of us and I'm sure every NASCAR team. It's uh, been pushing hard, but this week, New Hampshire, short track racing, 750 horsepower package. It's a 1.058 mile track. Uh, there are 301 laps, so essentially it's a 218 mile event. Lots of performance points, 210.7, and the stages are a little lengthy. We got the 75 in the first stage. I would imagine a comp caution around lap 35, 30, 35, somewhere around in there. Second stage, we go for 110 laps, and then the final stage is 116. Last time we were here, uh, Brad Kozlowski won, and he dominated. He led uh, over 50% of the laps, uh, was really, really strong. Um, We'll see what we get this week. Yeah, we're going to start at the top of the salary board. And Kyle Larson's at the top once again, starting 10th. He's 11,200 this week. He does have quite a bit of upside starting 10th. You've got the place differential, and he has been dominant throughout the uh, uh, latter half of the season. We've been in here recently, but uh, I'm at an 8. I don't think he's I'm as confident as I was in uh, a couple of the earlier previous races, and I talked about it in the podcast of why I think um, a little bit more in detail and went into the stats, but the 750 horsepower package hasn't been his strong suit compared to that 550, so that's why I'm uh, landing on an 8. How about you? You know, I ended up at an 8 as well. Uh, he can certainly pay off this price tag. You know, he's below 12K, um, and there's 301 laps. Uh, he could... He could struggle early and then find it late, or he could hit it early and start to drift back. I mean, there's a lot of ways for him to hit value in this in this race. I'm giving him eight because I could, I think he can certainly do it, uh, but he should be more like a nine or a ten in my opinion, based on where he had been kind of running just a few weeks ago. Looks like we're seeing a little bit of pullback from that that team. So uh, for me, I had to kind of ding him just a little bit and give him an eight, but I still think he's uh, worth considering for sure. Kyle Busch, 10,900, starting first. He finds himself in a great position um, after having a strong stretch of races. He's there on the pole due to the, the metric uh, that NASCAR has implemented. I'm at an 8. I think he has uh, an opportunity to be a dominator, but I think based on what we've seen, him and Kyle both, uh, Kyle Larson both have uh, performed better in the 550 package, and Kyle Busch is stats aren't near as strong as Kyle Larson's in this package as well. So I don't know how much I want to have, but I definitely do not want to miss how much uh, miss playing him as well as he's been performing recently. Yeah, it's a, it was a little tough this week to grade out uh, Kyle Busch, but I will say uh, cheers. He did well uh, for us last, last week. And uh, you know, this stuff's pretty sharp. I, uh, uh, this, we kind of need it for this slate. There's a lot to talk about, uh, but Kyle Busch, I landed at a nine on him. I wanted to give him a 10, but I think his teammates are just so strong. They're starting right there. I mean, Truex is literally starting second. Uh, pay attention to Tech because that can play big uh, this week on these guys. Uh, but I think if there is a week that Kyle Busch really breaks free and does well on a 750 horsepower package, it could come this week. They're on a heater. He's starting up front. 
He doesn't have to do too, too much. He could lead, you know, that first stage, finish top five, still still could be worth it if you hit the other guy right. So I'm at a nine on Kyle this week. William Byron, 10,600, starting 16th next on the board. He is somebody that could find himself with a nice path to value. He does have really strong data to back up this package and this style of track. Uh, we talked about him quite a bit in the podcast, but I landed on a seven because I think his price tag is just keeping me from wanting to roster him as much as I would if it was a little bit cheaper. He does have a decent path to value, but I think there's just some other drivers that you could find uh, just an easier way to achieve it. Yeah, I'd say on almost most normal slates, this is a this is at least an eight or nine, but I, I landed at a, a seven as well uh, because I feel like where most of your builds are probably going to need to be built is going to be on a few guys right below him. I think if you can cram several of these uh, high high 8K and 9K guys in there, that's going to be good. Trying to fit those guys plus a 10-6 guy I think makes it a little difficult. But Byron has the ability to take this, get a top five. He does that. He's likely in the optimal. Uh, so I don't think a, a complete fade on Byron is is smart by any means uh but if you're only playing just a few lineups i could understand it yeah kevin harvick 10-3 starting 12th finds himself in a position where he could have some place differential but we just haven't seen the consistency like we continue to say it seems like weekly um and it seems to be a struggle there at stewart haas racing it seemed like they were potentially getting out of it uh, in the last couple weeks but I think there might be some races to play some of those guys um, and maybe one of his teammates this race. I just don't think Harvick with that price tag finds that right combination. I give, I've give i given him a seven. Yeah, if we're judging this impact score completely off of track history, uh, Harvick is in a, a, a strong nine or ten. Uh, he has two wins in the last five races here, and I believe he's won here uh, four times overall. Uh, he's really, really strong. Uh, but he's been like that at most of the tracks we've gone to lately, and he hasn't hit those sort of career averages we're used to seeing. Uh, I landed at a seven. Again, I think he's another guy that's worth considering. He's likely to be lower owned, um, so he can be some good pivots off of maybe a Hamlin or some of these other guys we're going to talk about um, just to get a little different. Um, but not in love with uh, rostering a lot of Harvick this week. Denny Hamlin starting sixth. He's at $10,000, and we've given him our green flag in the race guide this week. That race guide is downloadable below. We fill that full of uh, useful information that uh, pairs well with this video that uh, we've got some core lineup builds and uh, data, uh, data, a driver pool and some other additional data that gives you a good perspective uh, visually to pair with this. But... Like I said, he's our one of our green flag drivers this week. I think he's in a great spot. I've given him a nine. He's got the best history in 750 package this year. He's also the has a lot of strong data uh, in the uh, short track action that we've seen so far. Seven races. He's really strong throughout. He's basically, in my opinion, one of the best plays. I'm right there with you. Uh, we went and talked about his stats both here the 750 package short tracks uh how he just looked overall in the season we went in depth on hamlin we went on depth on a lot of these guys that we're getting into so check out the podcast for the details of why we're giving these guys the scores that we're giving them uh, and i ended up at a nine as well uh he's close to a 10 um but again his teammates kyle bush we already talked about truex we're going to talk about they're right there, and they make it hard to just say, yeah, you know, kind of almost go all in on Hamlin. Uh, but the way he's running, uh, you got to respect it. What he's done at this track, you got to respect it. Uh, so it's a fairly strong nine for me. Chase Elliott, 9,800, starting third, is in an interesting position. I've given him an impact score of seven because I think there are just other drivers that have great paths to value. He just seems to be not the, this this package suits him in certain environments but the short tracks not one of them yeah i mean but he for his career short tracks are pretty good um so i wouldn't be that surprised if elliot does exceed our expectations um so i think that's why we're both kind of at a seven we we do recognize the equipment 
plus his talent. Um, but I think he's in a difficult spot, only starting third against what we think will be a pretty strong Gibbs and Penske outing. It's NASCAR, anything can happen. So uh, I don't fault you for rostering and trying to get off some of these more popular plays more than, you know, most likely and, and going with Elliott. But he's at a seven uh, for me. Um, but I think another one of our favorite plays uh, besides the Gibbs cars we keep mentioning is Joey Logano. Uh, 9,500, he starts 15th. I'm at a nine. He doesn't have to do too much. And he's been like the second best driver in the 750 horsepower package. And he's strong on short tracks. We know that. He hasn't had a good last few weeks. They need to rebound, try to get some momentum for the playoffs. I think this is a week that he can do it. Hometown track for him. Not the best history recently. We got to mention that. Uh, but overall, I think this is a great spot for uh, Logano. Yeah, I think uh, ditto what you just said. And to back that up, he's got four top fives out of the seven short track races this year in this package. I think this is kind of where they write the ship. Starting uh, 15th offers a nice place differential at a price tag of 9500 his teammate, Brad Kozlowski, 9,300, starting 11th, is in a very similar position. He was last year's winner here. I've given him an impact score of 9, just like I did Logano. I think they both are strong plays in the, these positions. Um, Logano definitely has a little bit more data to back up the reasoning, but I think Kozlowski just finds ways to get it done in these style of tracks. Yeah, I'm, there's a lot of arguments to be made for Brad. Um, and we were making them on the podcast. I landed at an eight. I, I could easily give him a nine. He's kind of right there between that Logano Truex, which I like. It's so uh, starting 11th, I feel like you kind of need him to for sure get up front and lead some laps, whereas you don't necessarily have to rely too much on that with Logano with those extra PD upside. I think he's a fine play. I think he's likely to be under own, lower owned than he probably should be. I mean, he literally won the race last year um, and dominated. Uh, so this could be a breakout way, uh, race for that two team. Obviously, it was announced this week that he's not going to be back. It's official. Uh, Cindric is going to be in that ride. Um, maybe this is when that, that team starts clicking. I mean, look at what Kurt Busch did last week. I mean, those guys know as a Ganassi organization and that one team – this is it for him. You know, it turns into a completely new team next year. Um, and who knows if Kurt Busch is even going to be with those guys. He could be on another team. So they're going all in. They're doing well. Uh, I think we could see that with the two team as well. Martin Truex, 9,100, starting second, is probably my favorite play of the day. Uh, he's starting there in that position where I think he, if he outpaces uh, Kyle Busch there on the on the uh, the pole position. I think he can get out and lead some laps and and be in a potential dominant position. Um, I've given him an impact score of nine. I think that based on some of the data we've seen and spe specifically here recently on some of the last uh, couple races, it came on strong. I mean, we'd mentioned him several times already. We talked about him a lot in our full episode. Uh, I'm at a nine on Truex as well. Uh, I expect him to get out front and lead. There, we saw a few races this year where he was in a similar position and did not do that. Um, but I think this is one of those tracks he can certainly do it. He may not win this race in the end, but he might be the bulk lap leader. And we know once you get out front and lead a lot of laps, even if you drift back late in the race uh, or have some wacky green, green white checkers or whatnot. He can still hit the optimal. Uh, I think Truex is a, is a great play. Someone that, if he wasn't priced where he's at, that we, I think, would be all over. But Daniel Suarez, he comes in next. He's 8,900. He starts 31st. I was a little surprised when we started going through the numbers and plugging in our projections. I had to end up giving him a, a six. What did you, uh, where are you at landing at on Suarez this week? I'm at a seven, I think because he has that very strong path to value starting 31st that if he is able to perform very similarly that his data backs up that we could see him teetering on that 5x uh fairly comfortably so i think i want to have some exposure i don't want to go overboard though with that price tag so now we get into 
an area of the slate that I think is, for me, it's risky, and I'm probably going to be passing on these next two guys. Um, they're certainly not getting our green flags this week. Uh, Ryan Blaney, 8,700, starting seventh. I can see it working out for him, but I mostly see it not working out for him. I am giving him a five. Where are you? What are you landing at on Blaney? I'm I'm giving him a six. I think we see him very sim similarly. And starting seventh, I just don't see enough data to point to feeling confident about it at that price tag. There's and that starting position is just not the right combination. And Kurt Busch pretty much is in the same position, especially after last week's win. He's 8,500 starting fourth. I could see him having a strong day, but to be able to reach value to me is going to be difficult when there's some other guys below him, I think, that might have a stronger chance based on some some of the data. And we talked about it a lot in the podcast. Um, Kurt Busch doesn't have the strongest 750 equipment. They have been better recently, but it's still with that combination, I just don't want to have too much exposure. Yeah, and, you know, they got the momentum going. They've been doing well, so I could see them continuing it. But when you factor in that 750 horsepower data, and then you factor in his last five races at this track, his average finish is only 17.6. It's a bit rough for him. He does have two top tens. Uh, Performance-wise, he's getting some performance points um, on both fastest laps and laps led. So there's chance for him still to make value. Uh, but when it comes to Kurt Busch this week, I, I, I gave him a three. I'm a little harsh on him. Um, I think just that fourth starting spot, position i'd rather have the gibbs guys starting above them and then i'd rather get some pd guys from you know drivers behind them so that's kind of where i'm at for kurt bush this week yeah it's going to be interesting to see where uh he falls especially after last week's big win eric almarola 8400 starting 22nd is somebody i'm interested in playing this week there's some strong data here at new hampshire and then uh, the 750 stuff uh horsepower package data is not horrible i think it's right on the edge of being able to reach 5x and might fly under the radar just a bit yeah i wasn't high on the last two guys we talked about but i'm going to be fairly high on the next two guys i think they're going to be kind of pivotal but for different reasons amarola i'm at a seven uh, he's got pretty strong data here. Um, obviously not the best data so far for the season because it's been a rough season for him. But I think uh, when you start 22nd and we are looking for some of these PD plays to stack with what we think, who we think will be the dominators, I think Amarola falls into that perfectly. Uh, but Alex Bowman is another guy right below him, 8,200 starting fifth. I think he could be a guy that is a dominator. And maybe we can get a discount dominator uh, this week. He may not get it early. He might not come in until the last 50, 30 laps or so. Uh, but I could see him winning this race. Uh, he wasn't my race pick. It's hard to really nail down Alex Bowman. Uh, but I think this is a race he's capable of winning. I gave uh, Bowman an eight. I landed on an eight as well. I think he just find it, or finds himself in a position where he could have – an awesome way to uh, performance points by being a dominator at a discounted rate. So I definitely don't want to miss the boat there. I think it's a, a, it's a fine, strong play in that position. So after Alex Bowman, we get to, I kind of think similar plays, different positions. We get to Chris Buescher, 8,000. He's starting 17th. Ryan Priest, 7,800, starting 25th. I think with the equipment, their history, um, all that, I'm not really that high on them. I, I gave them both a four. Where are you going to land on Busher and Brees this week? I look at very similar data based on our thoughts on the garage, and basically I landed on a five on both of them. I'm not super high on either of them. I think the next play where I'm more excited to go is Christopher Bell, 7,700, starting ninth. I'm at a seven. It looks like you're at a six, but I do feel he's a strong play this week. I actually really do like uh, Christopher Bell a lot this week. The reason why I'm at a six is, look, I think he could have a strong run, get you know maybe a seventh place finish, maybe a sixth. I think he has potential to do better, but you know, hey, if they finish around that range, that's a good day for him. That might not work out for your lineups. So that's why I'm, I'm a little 
lower on the score at a six, but I actually really do like Bell. I think he's a nice pivot for some of these other drivers. And he won two races in Xfinity here. And we mentioned already just how strong Joe Gibbs' equipment's been at this track. Well, he's in Joe Gibbs' equipment. So I think Bell is a, is a solid play this week. Uh, and, and a guy likely to go a little lower owned than he should. Matty D, 7,500, starting 14th. I've given him an impact score of six. He got some unfortunate news uh, that he is no longer going to be in that ride for the 21 car in the Wood Brothers. We talked about some of that in the Silly Season news and all the effects of that in our full podcast. So if you've got time, go make sure you check that out. But, yeah, I, with the six, I just don't know if he's got the right combination with that salary and that uh, place differential to really pay off that value. Yeah, I kind of look at Matty D and the guy right below him, Austin Dillon, at the same sort of thing. They're 7,500, 7,400. One starts 14th, the other starts 13th. Uh, a little higher on Matty D. Um, he's been pretty strong on his restarts. So I'm going to give him a five. Uh, but when it comes to Austin Dillon, I'm going to give him a four. They're not terrible plays. I think they can have good days. But when it comes to your DraftKings lineups, I, I think it's going to be a little bit more challenging for them to hit their value. Yeah, I landed uh, at a five on Austin Dillon. I think between him and Matty D, I'd rather have Matty D. Matty D's been a little bit more consistent uh, the last couple weeks since he's got that new crew chief. They've had a consistent string of top tens. But either way, they're both going to have difficult paths to value, but they are achievable. So personally, I kind of viewed the next three drivers as very similar plays. They are your sort of mid-tier place differential plays. These are the guys that you need to at least stack one, maybe two, um, with your dominators, uh, guys that we already talked about. Uh, Newman, uh, he's the highest price of the three. He comes in at 7,200. He starts 28th. I'm at a five on Newman. I'm at a five because I think when you start 28th and you're a guy like Newman, you have a top 15 upside, but I don't see it that likely of happening so i'm kind of right there in the middle at that five yeah i think it's going to be a stretch to uh get to that 5x value he gets 18th place he's still not there i think that's at the edge i've given him a six because he could can improve upon that i just think it becomes challenging i think ricky stenthouse 7100 starting 29th has a better path to value more um a little bit stronger data to back that up with i've given um, ricky stenthouse jr a score of eight I'm also at an eight on Stent House, which um, us DFS players know it's uh, always a little scary when you're high on uh, Ricky. Uh, but I think this is a time where you you gotta consider it. Um, you know he did really well uh, last time we we're in the 750, albeit at a road course. We didn't see it coming, and he started like 34th or 35th, something like that, and finished 12th. You know he gets another solid top 15 run. That's that's going to work out for you nicely. Um, but I think Ross Chastain, right below him at 7,000, starting 20th, another solid play. Giving him a 7 because he doesn't offer as much PD upside. Uh, but if he cracks the top 10 again, yeah, yeah, that's going to be real nice at that price tag. Yeah, I've given him an impact score of 7 because he really doesn't even need to crack the top 10 to be able to reach 5x value. If he gets one or two fastest laps, finishes 13th, 14th, he's already there at 5x. He's a decent play, in my opinion. I'm at a seven. Uh, we talked about uh, Reddick some in our episode. 6,800, starting eighth. They're going for points, it appears. They're trying to point their way in. They're going to try to run the best in each stage and get a high finishing position. Although you're hoping to get some PD from here, if he gets some fastest laps, maybe gets a few fastest lap, a uh, few laps led, you know, through some different pit strategy, maybe. Um, he doesn't need to do much to pay off this price tag. I'm going to be at a seven this week on Reddick. Yeah, he's in a great spot. I've given him a seven as well. I think uh, yeah, he's in a similar situation where if he gets a couple fast laps and then he gets a top 10 where he needs to to point his way in, then he's reaching 5X. I think he's being uh, been consistent enough here recently, and their uh, plan is to point their way in, so he needs to be clean with it. So I see him potentially reaching value. So realistically, um, I think there's only about two drivers that we really have to talk about left, and normally that's not the case. 
I'd say most slates, there's a lot of good low price 6K drivers and some in the 5K that are worth mentioning and who are in great spots. This week, I don't think we get much help from DraftKings as far as pricing. Everyone uh, below these next two guys, I, I, they're pretty low on our impact score. Uh, check the uh, race guide out for the, the full list. Uh, but Eric Jones will be the next guy we need to talk about. He comes in 6,700. Starts 24th. I like the guy below him, Bubba Wallace, starting 18th at 6,500. Um, I think the equipment's better. He has a better potential to hit a top 10 or a, at least a high top 15. Uh, but Jones is a guy. A few things go his way. Uh, late race caution. Who knows, right? Uh, I'm going to be at a 6 on Jones and a 7 for Bubba. I'm actually uh, scored the same six on uh, Jones and a seven on Bubba Wallace. We talked about Bubba Wallace last week and thought he was in a great position. I think that they've been a little bit more consistent here as of late and can feel a little bit more comfortable rostering him. I don't want to go overboard, uh, but I definitely want to have exposure. But Eric Jones, I think he's a fine play if he is able to get a, a top 15. It's a really good play, but... Uh, it's going to be a little bit more challenging with that equipment, but he does offer a little bit more place differential. Um, so it, those two guys really, yeah, they're they're. It's really difficult to find strong value below them. Um, might touch on Michael McDowell. I gave him an impact score of five, but there's not a lot of supporting data to feel very strongly about anything uh, higher than that. And the guys below him, sure, one of these guys could uh, get. Uh, have a decent day and then have enough cars in front of them, maybe uh, wreck out. There's situations that they could reach value, but I don't really feel comfortable rostering anybody below uh, Bubba Wallace this week. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Um, you may you may do a few builds with some of these super punt plays, the Justin Haley's, the Quinn House, the Josh Blinkies, all them. You may do it if you get enough of those higher price guys in. Uh, but for me, like I said, I think Jones and Bubba is sort of the bottom of the barrel where I want to go this week. Yeah, I think there's enough uh, value in the middle and uh, enough dominator potential on some discounts this week that we could uh, definitely make some more balanced lineups. But I don't have really much anything else to add to you uh, before we wrap this thing up. No, I'm just uh, looking forward to this break that we're all going into, kind of revamp, recharge, and four i'm sure awesome races uh before the end of the regular season could get some more surprise winners and then the playoffs are here and then we get to really watch the conclusion of this greatest season ever uh just unfold so i'm looking forward to all of that um and just looking forward to this race well we appreciate all of you out there watching we definitely uh enjoy the content or comments below if you enjoyed the content please hit the subscribe button it helps us out and we know that our content is relevant uh we do our weekly DraftKings contest like we mentioned so if you're interested in getting in that if you haven't already drop your dk tag below you can follow us on twitter where we're active on race day and throughout the week uh, uh with all of our content and we are excited to continue to provide uh, different elements and we do that by your engagement so if you don't see something you want to see or you uh, want to see more of something else just let us know we definitely appreciate everybody that's watched and uh, are looking forward to this fun new weekend in new hampshire so uh without further ado let's get to the race for the dk garage i'm joe and that's jeremy and we'll see you next time